Hey guys, Joey Shanks here once again, and I'm here to talk about my top five NASA inspired videos on the web. I'm always looking online, looking for really cool, interesting things to help me think about how I can create new and cool visual effects. And currently I'm working on trying to recreate nebula shots from the Hubble telescope. So I've been looking online and looking at all sorts of really cool videos, and I thought it'd be kind of cool just to share what I think are my top five favorite NASA inspired videos. And at number five, I'm going with the short film Stardust, which is a film that deals primarily with the Voyager 1 spacecraft, which was a craft that was sent out in 1977 to explore the, the depths of space. And this film really deals with this, the Voyager 1 going into this black hole, this void. And it kind of goes in for a close-up of this golden disc, and that is the golden record, which was kind of like a time capsule developed by Carl Sagan, which has tons of information with images, music, sounds, maps about our civilization on Earth. For any intelligent extraterrestrial beings to ever find it, they would hopefully be able to extract the data from it and learn a little bit about our culture and, and planet Earth. And if they were even more advanced, they could even travel to, to Earth. It's something that if you guys haven't seen, definitely check out. And even if you have, you should watch it again. Absolutely beautiful film by Post Panic. Coming in at number four is probably the most obscure film that will be on the list. And it is the 1960 short documentary film, Universe, done by the National Film Board of Canada. Now this film starts off on Earth following an astronomer around an observatory. McRae's job tonight, if the sky remains clear, will be to take photographs of six stars with the telescope. They really take time and don't rush things. There's no music in the background. You can hear all the sounds of this telescope, all the gears getting in line, the doors opening up. It's just really simple. You get a really good feel of how giant this telescope is. Once we look through the telescope, we start going to the moon, we start going to the other planets, we start even going beyond the Milky Way galaxy. It even inspired Stanley Kubrick to make 2001 A Space Odyssey. That narrator's voice does sound familiar, don't you think? The galaxies are the birthplace and graveyard of the stars. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. But when we look this deeply into space, we are looking at a ghostly image of the distant past. It's just a, such a well-crafted film. The black and white film is just absolutely beautiful, and you just don't see science fiction movies anymore made in black and white. And it's just a thing to behold. So Universe, 1960 film by the National Film Board of Canada, an amazing film that still stands up today. And coming at number three is the film Wanderers by Eric Rehnquist, a digital artist and animator from Sweden. The film is narrated by Carl Sagan, where Eric took Carl reading excerpts from his book, Pale Blue Dot, a vision of the human future in space. We invest far off places with a certain romance. The appeal, I suspect, has been meticulously crafted by natural selection as an essential element in our survival. And I think this is just a really positive outlook on where we might be two, three, four hundred years from now, where we're going to be able to go explore our solar system for science and also for recreation. And he's set up these shots that create these, this beautiful imagery with these backdrops of explorers, human beings, base jumping off these strange moons. Being tethered in the rings of Saturn and being able to fly around with bird suits. And a lot of these shots are actually based on scientific ideas and concepts. It's hard not to feel good after you watch this. Maybe it's a little early. Maybe the time is not quite yet. But those are the worlds promising untold opportunities beckon. And number two is In Saturn's Rings by Stephen Van Buren. Now this film is extremely cool and ambitious. It's composed of over 2 million photographs taken by the Cassini spacecraft, the Hubble telescope, and various NASA imaging. It's an independently funded film made for large format and IMAX screens. Now this film is in the final stages of production, so look for it to come out in the coming months. 
Now you think these images look good on your computer screen? Well wait till you see it in the theater. So when it comes out, I'll be sure to let you know. Steven is a good friend and a neighbor who only lives about 30 minutes away from me. So I'm always picking his brain and bugging him and asking him about what he thought of Interstellar or any sci-fi movie that comes out. Pound for pound, he's probably the most knowledgeable person in the world on how to make a beautiful large format film in your basement. And number one is more of a segment from a movie. But when I saw the sequence, it was life changing. Did you know? At least from a filmmaking standpoint, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to do practical effects and I wanted to do them well. It's 2011's The Tree of Life by Terrence Malick, the creation sequence, the greatest 20 minutes in movie history. Terrence Malick wanted this sequence to be based in science, but he also wanted elements of spontaneity and to create an organic look and feel to the sequence. So he brought in visual effects artist Douglas Trumbull, who worked on 2001 A Space Odyssey, Blade Runner, and Close Encounters of a Third Kind, to help supervise the practical elements in the film. For a three weekend period, they experimented with cloud tanks, spin dishes, and a various assortment of inks and liquids shot on the Phantom high speed camera. They also incorporated Hubble telescope imagery from NASA and animated those shots by creating layers within the image to create depth. But Terrence Malick didn't want to turn the sequence into a planetarium show, so what he would do was throw in a curveball shot every now and then. And what he meant by a curveball was a shot that was totally in camera and that didn't reference any NASA imagery. And here is an example of that. They called it the Green Nebula, which I think is the most epic shot of all time. There were even whispers that Terrence Malick was going to develop this sequence into an actual IMAX feature film called Voyage of Time. And we're not sure if it's ever going to get made, but I sure hope it will. So those are my top five NASA inspired films. And if you have your own top five, please list them in the comment section below. Click on the image if you want to watch these films in their entirety. And here are some other videos we've done in the past that kind of deal with this subject. And be on the lookout for my upcoming episode as I recreate Hubble telescope images with all in-camera elements. And also subscribe to our channel, Shanks FX. Take care, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. This is Joey Shanks, and I'm out. Later.